Now we're going to apply some transitions and then adjust their properties. So to follow along, go to Working Files, open up Projects, and then open up 0804 Adjusting Transitions. This is the same setup we used in the previous lesson. This time we're going to go a little bit farther in terms of dealing with properties. So let's start off by adding a transition to this little juncture here using the keyboard shortcut Control or Command D to load up the default transition. And there it is, it's the cross dissolve transition. Now to see the properties for a transition, you need to click on it to select it. You can tell it's selected because it gets dark like that. That means it's now active or selected. And now to see its properties, you need to open up the effect controls panel, which is normally up here in the upper left hand corner. It is in fact up there if you go to the window workspace editing workspace. So go to the effect controls panel, and this shows any effects you've applied to a clip or in this case to a transition. First order of business, I think, is to change the view to show actual sources. So click this little checkbox here. I just like to have that open all the time, so you might as well get it that way too. So now the issue is changing the duration of the transition. The default duration as set in preferences is 30 frames, or one second here in NTSC, and we can change it in a couple of ways. Here inside the Effect Controls panel, we can just change the number here by clicking on it to highlight it. When it turns blue like that, you can type in a new number. So I'll type in 2 colon 0, 0, press the Enter key, return, and I've got a two second transition now. If you look down here, the transition is now wider. It just doubled in length physically here inside the timeline to give you a feeling for the relative length of it compared to the clips around it. Of course, if I zoom in on this, it'll look like it's even longer, right? But that's just relatively speaking. It's still two seconds long. I could also use what's called the little scrubby tool. At least that's what I call it. See how the hand turns into the appointed index finger with a couple of arrows sticking out of each side? It's hard to spot here, but if you hover your cursor over your number like that, you'll see that little scrubby tool. When you see that tool, it means you can just click and drag a number. So I'll drag left and right. Going to the right, it gets larger. Going to the left, it gets smaller. So I'll take it down to about a half a second, 15 frames or so. Right about there. There we go. Notice how the transition got smaller down here. Just indicate that it is shorter now, down to a half a second. So that's one way to change the duration of a transition. I'll show you another way that's maybe a little more intuitive. The transitions down here work kind of like clips in that you can trim them. If I hover my cursor down here, you see the trim tool popping up here. Well, that's the clip trim tool. That's not a transition trim tool. You need to somehow get the transition trim tool to show up here. But when it's so small like this, it's hard to get it to show up. So you can expand the view of the timeline by pressing the plus key a couple of times. But right now the timeline is not active. The effect controls panel is active. So if I press the plus key, the effect controls timeline will change. See that? I want to do the same thing down here, so I click down here to make this active. And now I press plus a couple of times, and once I do that, I can maybe get the trim tool to show up. See how it shows up there? Looks like a trim tool with a transition in the middle of it. Here it's pointing to the left, here it's pointing to the right. When it's pointing to the right, that means you can change the length of the transition from the left-hand side. I can make it shorter or longer. So I'm dragging it out to the left to make it longer. Same thing on the right-hand side. I can either make it shorter here or longer this way. If I go left, it'll stop at the edit point. It can't go any farther to the left. If I go right again, it'll stop at the edit point. Whack right there. It won't go any farther. There you go. That's how you can change the length of a transition. And here it's a little more intuitive because you can see how it looks relative to the rest of the clips. And you can watch it there in the program monitor to see exactly where the transition begins or ends. There we go. Let's watch that transition now. There we go. All right. You can also change the alignment of the transition. Now up here, you can just drag the transition left and right like that. Now if you don't see this little timeline here, it's because this guy got closed. It'll look like this. If it looks like this, you don't see a little timeline, then go to this little dotted triangle there and click that, and that opens it back up. And here you can drag the transition left and right to change the alignment. This little black line in the middle here is the edit point. There we go, dragging it back and forth. Once you do drag it back and forth like that, you've now changed it from centering it at the edit to a custom location. So now it says custom start here in this little drop down list. If I go back to center, then we can line it up like that. Notice that as I hover over this edit point, it turns into the rolling edit tool. You can do rolling edits here from within this little timeline. Just drag it left and right, and I'm doing a rolling edit between those two clips. If I pull it left like this, the transition stays in place, but watch down there in the sequence. Watch how the edit point now jumps to the left. Boom, like that. I'll go back here like this, it'll jump to the right. There you go. 
So you can make a rolling edit up here as well as down here. The way you do it down here, of course, is that you need to hold down the control of the command key and then you click and I have a rolling edit tool like so. And again, the cross dissolve does not go away when you make this edit. All right, let's move on to another transition that has a few more properties. I'm going to go to the changing place or time sequence. I've got the shadow of the Matterhorn there in the fall and the shadow of the Matterhorn here in the winter. I want to put a transition between the two that says we are going to a new time. So I'm going to go over here to the effects panel, slide this guy over to the effects panel, which is normally down here in the lower left hand corner. Go over to video transitions. I'm going to go to 3D motion. Let's apply the doors transition there, right there. Notice how as I drag it left, I can align it so that it ends at the edit. Drag it to the middle, it hovers over it, it overlaps both. And here it begins at the edit point. You can change this later, but we'll just put it at the center, which is the default way of putting things. There we go. Now, if I click on it to make it active, it'll show up here inside the effect controls panel. I want to scroll down a little bit to show you that it has a few extra features. It has a border, a border for the doors. Let's watch how the doors open here and go, well, they actually kind of close, right? Which is not the way I really like to go. I like to open to the next scene. This is how the transition works. It goes this way. So the first thing I like to do is click on the reverse button in this particular case to have it open up to the next scene. I think it's a little cooler to reveal things like that. And then I want to add a border. So I just go over here to the border width. I need to give it a width before we can actually see it. So I'm going to open it up a little bit so you can see it and I'm going to add a width to it. That's not much, hardly any border at all. I'm going to bring it up to 20 or so so you can definitely see it right around there. There you go. Now you can see the border. And notice the color is black, that's the default color. I want to change it to something else. So I can click on this color swatch to open up the color picker, take any color I want. Usually you slide over here to pick the general color and then you can sort of narrow it down over here. So I'm going to pick something really garish here. Pick that, go pick purple. And right off the bat, you're kind of going, that doesn't work. And you're right. So the better approach is to get a color from the clip itself. So you click on this eyedropper, that lets you lift a color from the clip. I'm going to hover the eyedropper tool anywhere here inside the workspace and it'll take any color. Notice that as I hover over it, the color swatch changes color depending on what I hover over, yellow, gray, brown, whatever. It'll change color. If I'm going to go into the clip here, let's say to this reddish brown there and click there, and that'll change the color of the border. Anti-aliasing quality is off. I'd rather have some anti-aliasing so I don't have stair steps. Let me zoom in to show you that. I'm going to go to 200%. Scroll over a little bit. Here's the vertical bar. And the vertical bar and the horizontal bar do not have stair steps. They don't have this thing called aliasing. Only when you have a diagonal line do you get that kind of stair stepping there. See that showing up there? I'll go to a higher resolution so you can really see it. It'll look really bad now. Let's just zoom way in, slide over. All the pixels here are rectangles. And so the rectangles show up right along a stair step edge like that when you've got a straight line on a diagonal. So you can kind of repair that by turning on anti-aliasing. Seems backwards, right? Anti-aliasing is off. Why don't they just say aliasing is on? But nevertheless, anti-aliasing is off. So we'll turn it on and we'll start out low. It just makes things kind of fuzzy. It kind of has a gradual color difference from one to the next rather than being starkly brown and starkly blue. It kind of makes a gradual shift from one to the next. We'll change to medium and then finally to high, which is really more detailed. The reason this is not on by default is that it causes the processor to work a little bit harder. Nevertheless, it's not that much harder, so probably a good idea to use anti-aliasing to some level. Now, if we watch this, it'll be a softer edge to it as it opens up. And it happens so quickly, you're probably not even going to notice it, but it's nice to have that extra little detail. So we've taken care of borders. I want to take care of the start and stop location for a transition. So let's go to the similar scenes sequence. Got these shots of this bird here and this stream. Got the exact same stream with a different bird. And now I want to figure out some way to let people know, by the way, we've gone to a different bird, same location. So I'm going to use a transition that will highlight that. There's a collection of transitions called the iris transitions right there. And all but two of them have a start point, a little circle that shows where the transition begins. We worked with iris round before, so how about this time we work with iris star? Let's drag that over there and put the transition point there. Click on it to open up the effect controls display. Now you see it's got this little circle. And the circle is where that transition begins physically in the screen. So let's go into the transition a bit so you can see that. 
And there's the star. Let me put a border on it so you can really see it a lot better. So I'll put a big old border on there, like 20 or so. There's the border. And now you can see that the star comes out of the center. But I want the star to come out where the bird's head is in the next scene. So I just grab the star here and pull it over a little bit. A little bit more. You got to pull it and then stop to get it to work. There, there they go. Let me go a little bit to the left here to see how it looks at the very beginning of the transition. Take my little right and left arrow keys. I think I'll move it just a little bit more here so it's right on his head. There we go. I think we got it now. So let's see how that transition works. So I'm going to let it rip here. Doop. There you go. Kind of fast, so I want to make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to zoom in here on the timeline by pressing the plus key a couple times. I'm going to make it longer by just dragging it to the left here a little bit. Well, look what's happening. Funny thing happening here. I can't drag it any farther to the right or the left. I pulled as far as I can, and it stops. What's going on here is that we run out of head and tail frames. When I'm pulling it to the left, there aren't any more head frames in this clip. We've used them all up. When I pull it to the right, there aren't any more tail frames in this clip to overlap with this clip. So let me just show you how the star works first, then I'll explain that thing about the head or tail frames. Let's take a look. Here we go. There we are. Works perfectly. So let's talk about the head and tail frames. Over here in the effect controls panel, in the view here of this transition, up here in the timeline, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little triangle there saying, no more tail frames. You've run out of all of them. You can't use any more. The edit point's here. This clip overlaps that far, but that's as far as you can take the clip and still have actual frames in the clip. Here on the left-hand side, in the B clip, this one here, I say left here because it's left of the edit point, but in fact, it's the right-hand clip. If you look there, you can see a little triangle in the upper left-hand corner. Those are the head frames of this second clip, and they too have gone right to the edge of your transition. When you've dragged here, you can't drag beyond the edges of the head and tail frames that are available to you. But if you want to drag beyond them, you want to make the transition even longer, you can make it longer by dragging up here in the timeline. So I'm going to drag this guy to the left. Okay, I'm going to drag this guy right. And look what's happened. Let's watch the transition for a second. Here we go. We extended the transition. And then we're in. Now you might have noticed that the bird in this picture here, in this clip, doesn't move at first. Then it starts moving. Then you start seeing some shadows move, and then the bird moves. Well, the bird's kind of stock still anyways, but you don't notice the shadows moving until we get right here. Before then, the shadows don't move at all. Nothing's moving there. But right here, you start seeing the water move and that kind of stuff. That's because all these clips here, all these frames here, are freeze frames from this second clip. So to help overlap here, Premiere Pro automatically creates freeze frames of this clip here to overlap over here. And as we continue into the clip, this clip's tail frames go this far, right there, and then they stop, they run out. So after that point, it makes a freeze frame of that last tail frame and holds it for the duration of the transition. So right here, at this moment, you're looking at freeze frames, but you have to be really astute really paying attention to know that those are freeze frames. Well, let's watch the transition again. It's right now, this is a freeze frame. Now it's moving. So is the background here. And right now, this has now become a freeze frame. But who would notice, right? So if you want to make a longer transition and there aren't enough head or tail frames, then Premiere Pro automatically creates these freeze frames to extend the length of your transition. Let me delete this transition for a moment and show you one other thing that happens. I'm going to drag this guy from the left here, drag it all the way to the right to make sure it's at its full original length. And to do that, I need to switch over to the Ripple Edit tool by pressing the Controller Command key and drag it as far as I can. Now I've run out of tail frames. Do the same thing for the guy on the right. I'm going to hold down the Controller Command key and now drag this guy to the left as far as it can go. And I'll click away to deselect. And you see we've got those two little triangles there, the left and the right side, saying you have all your head and tail frames here. There are no extras laying around here for you to overlap if you want to make a transition. Well, what happens if I put a transition there then? I'm going to take Iris Diamond instead and drag it there. There it goes. No problem. I can't go left and right. I can't say, you know, make it to the right or make it left. The only place I can put it, if there are no head or tail frames, is right there in the center. I let go now and I get this message. Insufficient media. This transition will contain repeated frames. That means that you have duplicated frames. You freeze frames throughout here because there are no head or tail frames. I'm going to click OK. I don't mind. I'm glad that you told me. It's good to know, though, that Premiere Pro will compensate for this by putting freeze frames where there are no head or tail frames. Let's watch this transition and see what happens. 
Now you got to be really paying attention to know that those were freeze frames. But that's what's going on here. All these frames here are freeze frames. There were no extra header tail frames allowed there. Let me show you one more thing. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to drag the clip on the left in so there are tail frames. Hold that down. Drag it to the left. So there are tail frames now. So now what happens when I drag a transition there? Let's change to a different transition. Let's change to stretch, just to have something different. I'll do stretch over and drag it there. Now I'm going to try to put it on top, and notice it won't let me put it on top. The only place where there are extra frames to make a transition are the ones from the left. So these guys will overlap the ones on the right. There aren't any extra ones on the right. So it says, nope, you got to put it on the right-hand side there if you're going to have a nice smooth transition. So I put it there. I don't get that message, but it only goes from here to there. That way, you have actual rolling frames here going over this one with their actual rolling frames. But I can click on it like this. I can move it if I want to. If I move it so that I really will overlap it, then I'm going to get freeze frames here on the left-hand side from this right-hand clip. If you look really careful, you'll see that the right-hand clip is just a freeze frame here, but goodness knows how you can possibly see it in that kind of squished look again. So again, it's a really convenience that Premiere Pro does this. It creates these freeze frames. I'll stretch it out even farther here to make it really obvious. Way, way left here. Let's watch how that works now. Again, no motion, but because the clip was just moving along in that funny squished way, you couldn't even tell that there was no motion there. But notice it's a freeze frame, freeze frame, all the way until right there, then it starts moving. That's how that works. Let's take a look at one more thing that we can do with transitions. That's the follow motion. So let's look at this guy here. I'm going to follow these bikes along there. We want an effect or a transition that will follow that motion. Let's go on down here to wipe. And we'll have a standard wipe here. Just call it wipe. We'll drag wipe over to it. There you go. And the wipe looks like this. Left to your right. Which kind of works right here, but let's just take a look at the timing a little bit more. I'm going to click on it to make it active. And I'm going to put on a border so we can see it better. So I'll put the border up to around 20 again. Take a color from the scene, like that green color there. There we go. And I'm going to have it go left to right. I could have it go right to left if I scroll up here a little bit. These little directional triangles here say which direction you want to go. You can go from right to left here if you want to. It's not the way I want to go, but it would go like this. I could have it go from the upper right-hand corner down to the lower left-hand corner, like so. That's what that little guy does here, this little points around the compass. Only a few effects have this, but when you see that this is what it means, you can change the direction that the transition goes. But now we want to go left to right because that matches the flow of the scene here from left to right. I'm thinking perhaps I want to have the transition start maybe a little bit later. So I could drag this left-hand side and maybe bring it in like this. Let's see how that works now. That would work. Or maybe make it earlier, just to experiment. See what that's like. Kind of cuts them off at the end there, so I'd rather have it be a little bit later than a little bit earlier. Just like that. And it fits it pretty well. I could extend a little bit farther here. See if that works. There you go. So you can adjust the position, the alignment, and the length, the duration of the transition. So that's a basic rundown on the properties that you can change when you want to customize a transition. I'm going to take a look at some of the custom options in some of the transitions, as well as a couple of unusual transitions in the next lesson.